What's up everyone, Man Bum Metal it here. So I was just working on a video um, on how to control the Boss ES8 with my computer. And I was coming across some issues with the timeline and syncing up the beats per minute from the ES8 to the timeline. And long story short, when I was looking through the parameters on the timeline and looking at the manual online, that there's a parameter that is in a spot that it shouldn't be. So specifically it's the MIDI clock control so basically it tells the pedal if it should be controlled by a MIDI clock coming into the MIDI input, but it's in the global parameters where it should be in the preset parameters. Some presets you want controlled by the MIDI clock coming in and some presets you don't. I went online and I looked up and there's a really easy way to update these pedals. So this applies to the timeline, the Mobius and the big sky. It's really simple to do. Uh, I've already done my Mobius, worked perfectly. So, uh, this should be a really quick and easy video. So first thing you want to do is you want to go to the strymon.net slash update website. I'll have a link below. It'll show you uh, in the bottom here, kind of one of the first things you see is what the latest firmware is. So the latest firmware for the timeline is 1.87. And it's actually really simple to check how to do this. It has a link there, but all you have to do is unplug your timeline, hold down the tap button, power it back on, you wait for it to say timeline and then it'll say test, let go of that tap button, use the type dial to turn to revision, tap the type dial in and it'll show you what the revision is. So I'm on 1.58 and I should be on 1.87. So this is probably one of my problems and we can actually just go in here, we can look at release notes. So if we scroll down here, we'll see that Revision 158 was released in February 2015, which was five years ago. So this is really out of date firmware. And we can look back at November 2017 firmware 1.84 that the it shows exactly what uh, the problem that I'm seeing is the MIDI clock is a parameter that's no longer found in globals. It is uh, now found in the parameters menu. This is excellent to hear. I'm really excited kind of excited about this, hopefully this fixes my problem. So now we can just go into updating this firmware. So we scroll down and basically what you'll need is some sort of MIDI device that connects to your computer. And I'm using my interface, the RME Fireface 800. Uh, it's got a pretty solid MIDI. I've never had any problems with it. They do recommend that the Roland UM1 or the Yamaha UX16, got links below for those. They say those work. So if you guys don't already have one, try to maybe get one of those just because they are recommended. So to connect them, all you do is do the MIDI out from the timeline to the MIDI in of your MIDI device and the MIDI in from your timeline goes to the MIDI out of your MIDI device. So one thing they don't show on here is backing up the settings on, on the device. Um, and I don't know if you really need to do this. Um, I don't know if it's helpful because I know how to back it up, but I don't know how to reset it if I need to but it doesn't hurt to have those settings. So what you wanna do is connect your MIDI device to your timeline or your Mobis or Big Sky and go into an audio sequencer. I use Reaper, uh, create an audio channel and set it up to connect to uh, whatever device you're using. So I use my uh, Fireface. So I then go into the global parameters on the timeline and I scroll to PRDMP. So I think it's preset dump. So if you go into PR dump, you'll see that it first says exit, you scroll, it says all, and then you can select specific presets or, pre or patches to download. Um, I'm just gonna do all, and then I'll go back to my sequencer, hit record, and then hit the value button down to accept that, and it'll send all those presets uh, to my computer. And you can see it counting down on the timeline, and it says sys uh, on the bottom of the track that it's recording. It takes like a minute or so to go through all that. Once it's done, you can open up the MIDI file and you'll see a uh, sysx parameter that's been saved. There's a whole bunch of information in there. I don't know what it all means, but it's good to at least have it in case you ever want to try to back it up in the future. If you're really worried about it, go ahead and write down all your settings for everyone, but there's so many parameters in these. It might be a little bit of a problem uh, or, or maybe a little bit of a difficulty to do that. So whether or not you really want to back up, it's your call. Um, but once you do that, all you have to do is get this Strymon Nixie software. So I'm on Windows, I already downloaded this, and they do have a step-by-step -step guideline here, um, but I'll just show you how it works. So let's go ahead and open up Nixie. 
So it's gonna look for a pedal and it finds my timeline. Now, if it didn't find your pedal, what you might wanna do is click on this new MIDI adapter list or view MIDI adapter list maybe, yeah. View MIDI adapter list, because it didn't work for me at first, but basically if you, if you can't find anything, you just end up selecting your uh, input and output MIDI ports on your MIDI device and then it should work. So once I did that, it worked for me. If it doesn't, make sure your MIDI connections are set up right. So in does not go to in, in goes to out on both devices. So I can see here that my current version is 158 and it wants me to update to 187. So I go ahead and hit the update and it's going to load the firmware. So this took um, four or five minutes on the Mobius and you can actually look over here on the timeline. It's gonna say loading on the timeline. So you know that the timeline is actually getting something. So I'll go ahead and speed this up. All right, so it went through, um, did its update, reset the device. So now I have a window here that says the update attempt was completed. I'll hit okay. It's gonna look for the device and then it'll pop up and read all the presets that are uh, currently loaded in the timeline. So once that pops up, we've got everything here. So we can actually see all of our presets that are loaded. So I'm actually pretty excited uh, about this software because you can actually do all of uh, your adjustments and everything here uh, on the computer. Um, you can go ahead and, and call it whatever you want. Um, yeah, do everything. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. So what's really cool, I think, about this software is that uh, you can actually go ahead and select or, or change all the settings on on the software itself. And what's really neat about it, I think, is that you can actually see what your settings are all at. You know, if you've done this before, you know that when you make a change with one of the knobs, you save it, you switch to another patch, change it, switch back to that patch. You don't know exactly where your knobs are. Uh, you can go ahead and turn it and then kind of turn it back to when the light turns back green. So it means that's the original setting. Uh, but in this, you actually will see every single uh, knob setting and where it's at exactly. And you actually see all of the other parameters that are kind of hidden in these menus, which is actually really cool. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I don't know how often I'll use this uh, since I've, I use maybe four, five, six settings um, kind of set once and I switch between them uh, and I don't really mess around with them too much, but this is a nice visual uh, way to mess with the pedal if need be. Now, of course, the one thing that I really need to worry about uh, with this update is making sure that uh, the MIDI clock is now in the parameters and not the global menu. So I'll go into parameters and go all the way to the right and there it is, MIDI clock. So now I can tell the timeline whether or not I want to use the MIDI clock uh, based on the preset and not the uh, globe, not globally. And the reason that's really important is because I typically use two types of delays. One is just a slap back, so it's a really quick, short delay, like this one, it's, I could actually see it, it's 50 milliseconds. For distortion, I use 60 milliseconds. And uh, repeats are very low, so you don't really hear it more than like once. That is just to kind of fatten up the sound. And then when I do my solos, I actually use a ducking delay. Um, you can use just a normal delay, but it's always a longer delay. And that one's gonna have more repeats. But this is one instance where I'd wanna use a MIDI clock, but on my other slapback ones, I don't want to use a MIDI clock. And actually, if we go into the settings here, we can actually see it right there, MIDI clock. Excellent. So now I can actually turn off the MIDI clock from my clean slapback, we'll write that. My distortion slapback will also turn off. My solo ducking I want on. Uh, yeah, all those will, will keep on. If I go to the swell, I'll turn that off. So, excellent. So I definitely have uh, what I need. Yeah, but that's it. That's that's really uh, how you update the timeline, Mobius or Big Sky, and the Nixie software that comes with Strymon that you just don't know about. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, feel free to drop a like down there. It really helps me a lot. And if you wanna hear more about what I'm working on, like how to control your ES8 with your computer, that's gonna come out in a week or so, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever I have a new video come out. But hey, until next time, rock on. Hello.